This episode of On the Line is presented to you by Living.Fit, your one stop for all your fitness needs. Make sure you go download the app Living.Fit today. Now here's the show. Welcome to On the Line. Today is Tuesday, July 12th. We got a great show for you guys. We got friend of the program, recurring guest, Ricky Simone, back on the show. Awesome interview. Uh, somehow he had no idea who Joey Chestnut was. We broke the news about how he's the greatest athlete of all time to him. Uh, we talked about the fight with Jack Schwartz, UFC Long Island this Saturday. Uh, and uh, we find out he's low-key a surfer, bro. But uh, we wrap up with our winners and losers of the week. But before we move on to Ricky Simone, if you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Listen on Apple, Spotify, Deezer, Stitcher, or any other podcasting platform. Hit that follow. Maybe leave a review. So without further ado, here is Ricky Simone. We are joined by a very special guest, a friend of the program. He finally believed he conceived and he achieved it. He's got a fight coming up here at UFC Long Island. We are joined by ranked fighter Ricky Simone. Ricky, my man, we did it. We oh, got the fight. Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. I'm excited. Finally. You got me waiting forever. I'm, I've been trying to get some something going forever. I don't know why they've had me sit out for so long, but but yeah, let, hopefully uh, get through this guy quick and stay active the rest of the year. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully so, and hopefully not everyone just keeps fucking like ducking you or like just saying no mm-hmm. or just being all talk. We we can get moving and not have to wait and get something working. But like your fighting guy, he's probably just like you, Kyle. Like similar thing. A lot of people don't want to fight him. So he is a tough motherfucker. Jack Shore, another friend of the program. Fun fact: first ever friend of the program matchup for us because we've been cool with Jack oh, Wall. We're not cool with you. So uh, don't tell Jack because you're <laughs> the American. So we're kind of on your side. But that, come that's, on, that, that's, that's that's between us. That's between us. So you're the American. On Independence Day. Come on. Yeah. yeah there we go. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't think there's ever been any other signs that like we know who we need to cheer for in this instance. It's <laughs> it's our boy Ricky, and like this has yeah, to be an exciting go. fight for you, man. Like this, he's he's one of the top prospects. Um, especially it's it's just it's just a really and it's also like a super fun fight i feel like stylistically uh, you guys are pretty similar i feel like even though you guys are both like wrestling bases uh it's gonna be a lot of on the feet and it has a lot of fight of the night potential yeah yeah i mean excited he's he's a uh, definitely a tough prospect um but uh yeah i'm you know once we get, it's once you get ranked everyone's looking to fight up right and so it it's uh always tough like taking fights you know uh with guys ranked behind you especially you know i've been in the rankings before i'm finally in the rankings again so uh hopefully i go in there and prove my point and then i can get you know someone in the top 10 you know that's all you can ask for it's like you know for yeah that's one of the that's one of the bad things luckily like in your division like in the especially 135 is just like you can fight anyone between like fifth like 20 to like top top of the division like they're all just tough motherfuckers and they're all gonna be the same like even though it's again Jack's a little bit lower than you, it's still like that value is almost the same as being someone like a couple spots above you. You may not be able to take their spot, but in terms of like mm-hmm. fighting someone else, it's you're gonna you're gonna take their spot even though you didn't fight them, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. And it's a fun match if you get to fight at UFC Long Island. You guys were on the main card. Kind of bullshit. Got pushed off the prelims. It's a little yeah. frustrating. And that moves the fight time up a little bit, which also mm-hmm. kind of sucks because you're – well, for you, it's not that bad because you're going forward three hours, and it's not like you have to wake up at, like, 7 it, in the morning and fight at, like, 10. It's still, it's still like, earlier, though, for me, earlier than I would, I would normally fight. You know, it's an early card already, and now, like, I bumped down a few slots of earlier. But, you know, the sooner I can get a beer, the better. <laughs> it's kind of tough not having a beer on Amer- an Independence Day. A little yeah. tough. Not very American. Do you at least what what you do to celebrate today? Just go fireworks. The uh, spiel. No, no fireworks. But uh, I got some good training in, and then uh, we went and shot a bunch of guns, <clears throat> fired off a go. bunch of rounds, and uh, uh, yeah, but you know, shut off that freedom. Felt good. <laughs> <laughs> Closest thing you can get if you can't if you can't go see fireworks, go shoot off guns. Oh, it's another yeah. very soup got so patriotic, very American. Let's go punch each other in the face and go fire guns. What else could you ask? Yeah, for? <laughs> yeah. That's a perfect day, honestly. That's what I try to do every day. <laughs> uh, yeah, just train, shoot guns, and you know, mm-hmm. be a dad here soon. We said this before. You're now you got the dad strength potentially coming up in this fight. Jack doesn't see that coming. Kind of two weeks before. That's like a superpower. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, we talked about it before, but I mean, man, it's 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 cool. It's fun. You're like it's, I don't know. Get the dad strength. Sick. And also, it's about that time. It's about that yeah, time. Yeah, I'm almost girl dad vibes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm almost thirty. I turned thirty this summer, so it's a good time. Good time for my my wife and I. Uh, yeah, we're we're super excited. We're super excited about it. 
Nothing else you can ask for. Yeah, as I said, that's right. Big thing. One thing I didn't ask about last time, though, is I realize you're a huge spicy food guy. Are you able to eat spicy Oof. food, like, leading up to camp? Or do you have to, like, bland it out so, like, you don't just fuck up your stomach? Um, No, I, I, crave, I, I crave it even more. I crave spicy stuff even more during camp. So I get those jalapenos. I'm eating jalapenos. Uh, um, and then I just find all the different hot sauces. And I, I think most fighters do that. I mean, our food is so bland and we're getting so skinny. Uh, we need to add some flavor. So... I know my cousin Vince is even crazy. Actually, my I, I brought my cousin Vince in for my last hard week. Um, and he gets crazy. The spiciest stuff I've ever eaten has been with him. And he he gets crazy with it. Uh, oh, it's like a but, ghost uh, pepper guy? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. He, oh. He had, I'm sure he had this ghost pepper at his house, and he was just dumping the sauce all over the stuff. And I'm like, dude, I think that's just like for like a little bit of like, – it says like wear gloves when – using the sauce or whatever i'm like dude that's too much that's too much that's way too much way too much if you have to like sign waivers that's way too much it's a little too much spice yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a nice have little you, medium have, to it have you heard of like the death nut challenge it's like oh, i, I think it has like five different nuts or whatever and each one gets like hotter yeah 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 yeah, yeah 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 we did that at his house and oh man it messed me i feel like i had just like a brick in my stomach i just laid on the floor at the end of it for, for like a good half an hour it was it was rough but Made it through. Made it through no water either. Oh, that's champ shit. Champ shit. That's all yeah. you need. That's, that's yeah. perseverance. <laughs> battling through battling through tough adversity. Yeah, I was going to say, actually, that does make sense because, like, you, like, the hot sauces, things like that, and, like, no calories or, like, minimal calories, just a little bit of sodium, and that's it. It just, like, helps you spice yeah. up the, the bland-ass chicken, rice, whatever it is. Do you uh, – yeah. so at what point do you really start to cut out carbs and stuff, like, going into the weigh-ins? Is it, like, the week of or is it a little bit before yeah, more more the week of because I'm still I'm still pushing through some hard practices uh, during this week. So you know you got to fuel your body for for those workouts. So you know I'm not gonna be able to perform during practice. So I I, I just fuel for the workouts. You know uh, at, at this point. And speaking of the cousin, by the way, Fence, I know you say you you got him out there in uh, Washington. Did you? And I saw they dragged you down to Vegas to be their drunk driver for the weekend. Was that like? Did they do that on <laughs> oh, purpose because they knew you'd drive for uh, you? <laughs> yeah, dude. I, that just ended up. <clears throat> that just ended up happening. I was uh, training in California over over at Team Oyama with the boys, and then um, decided to drive to Vegas for like a, a few days to get some recovery and at the PI. And my cousin lives out there, so I usually stay with him. And um, Coach John Wood from Syndicate invited us over to um, you know have some drinks and, and hang out. And you know I'm in camp, so I'm sober. And I was with uh, Ode and Journey Newsom and Vince and Coach and. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, I was like, oh, okay, we got over kind of early, and maybe you, you're not gonna be in bed around like ten or eleven. You're not know, got early bedtime during camp. Dude, these guys have me after like almost one in the morning. I'm like, I cutting them off. I'm like, get your asses in the car right now. <laughs> I gotta get to bed. I gotta practice tomorrow. But yeah, they were wild, and it, it was fun. Oh, it, it's not as fun. It's not as fun being around that when you can't drink though. No, where you like what like what do you drink when you go out and you get like your do you, do you just do water? Do you club soda? Do you get the non-alcoholic stuff? No, nah, I just, just wa- I, I usually just have like a jug of water or something, stay on that water and uh, take. Super boring. Maybe a kombucha if I feel like getting crazy. Ooh, yeah, get a little <laughs> bit of that fermentation, get that like 0.0003% yeah. alcohol. So you're drinking yeah. a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> drink like Not drink alcoholic, of those. Just, just a healthy probiotic. Yeah, healthy. nice health probiotic to get your body going. Get your body going. <laughs> then I know you want surfing. Like, how long have you been a surfer? um not a surfer i'm definitely not i don't think i can claim that but uh but you do uh, it. you go out and do it okay. yeah for sure uh, I, I i love it i fell in love so i used to train um uh, in hawaii with tyson nam i was going there for like uh for um probably like three years off and on and um he, he took me surfing a couple times and i fell in love with that i couldn't believe how hard it was at first and uh but once i first uh first time i got up on a wave i was like just like pumped i was like screaming like this is sick and I got addicted. So anytime I go to California now, I, I go to, out to like Huntington Beach area. That's where I like to surf and, and just uh, on a Sunday, if I have some time or something, you know, uh, catch some waves. It's, uh, you know, and it, 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 it's a blast. I, I love it. it. It's way different than being over here. I'm from Washington. You know, it's freaking raining. How, how, you know, it's raining out of town. The only surfing I get is on the on the roads from the water from all the rain. Oh so. yeah, yeah. Uh, you get a little rainstorm, go out in the go out yeah. the streets. Yeah. yeah. So I gotta I remember, go out there every time I'm out there. I was like, I've never I've never gone surfing. I don't know if I'd, I I know I'd suck at it, but maybe do like the little wave things. You know how they have like the it's like a Mickey Mouse kind of surfing, but um you have like the wave things. I don't know what they're called. They're like you know what I'm talking about. Like you can go surfing like, the, like at a water park. It's like they have like a wave thing. Like a wave pool, kind of. Not not like about? a wave pool, but it's like a little more extreme. Like for people who want to surf, it's like I don't know how to describe it. 
I think I think I think I know what you're talking about, but I want that sometimes those look even more intense. Yeah, those they're like, like oh, a little they're, bit harder. Oh, yeah, they're a little yeah. bit a little bit harder, but you're not like you're not in the middle of the ocean, so uh, it's a little scary. It's a little scary. Like I'm in camp, you know. Uh, Alex told me he like I think he stepped on uh, Alex Press told me he stepped on a stingray like, not that long ago when he was out there. So I'm like a little paranoid because I'm getting ready for a fight and stuff, but. Uh, you gotta have some fun you gotta let you gotta cut loose <laughs> yeah i mean you guys also go into it and fight in a cage for a living so you have to get that adrenaline rush to some points too oh, other yeah. than just the fights yeah yeah <laughs> for the, sure what's the great what's the what's the most uh, other than fighting what's like the big adrenaline rush like that you have to get in like have you ever done like skydiving or anything like that to get the get really oh, get the man. juices flowing i have no desire to go skydiving at all hell no neither no do thing. i neither do i fuck um, that <laughs> I'm pretty, I'm pretty tame. I mean, I shoot guns. Uh, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's, that's dope. I mean, surfing does feel like an adrenaline rush sometimes, but, but dude, most of the time I'm, I train two or three times a day and I train hard. So I'm tired. I'm tired most of the time, you know, gaming or, or shooting guns or something like that. So wait, I know yeah, you're a gamer. I know we talked about this last time. You're an apex guy, right? You're not a call of duty guy. You're not in the new war zone. You're not in the war zone, right? PUBG, call of duty. I try to play all like the, um, like the battle royale modes and uh my cousin Ben just got me on the apex last night i played oh. uh, a couple games so I, I'm, I'm starting to get on it it's it's way more there's way more to it there's a, there's a lot there's a lot to apex but it's fun it's a lot of fun it is fun i was i never i never i haven't gotten into apex i'm still i'm still like in warzone but they had the new map i was gonna ask you like this like i'm, I'm a massive mm-hmm. fan of like the pirate island thing it's cool i like it it's like, like yeah, Assassin's Creed sick. call of duty yeah yeah i like the new map uh, i like it's a good switch out too for sure yeah, it's really like I just like you just go like sw- swinging from like rooftop to rooftop. It's kind of sick, mm-hmm. honestly. I like yeah. it. Just go rooftop swinging. It's fun. It's a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. So it sounds like you've kind of been all over for the camp. You kind of been in Washington, went to California, went over to Syndicate, kind of just kind of being a little a little roamer, a little floater. That's why I do every camp. Every camp, I, I split I split my time. Uh, I, you know, I usually you know we prefer six to eight week camps, and I'll be over here, America Top Team Portland, um, and then for about three weeks, I like to go stay with Coach Oyama. And uh, get get plenty of training with the, with Alex Perez and all the boys over there, and uh, and if I have a few days, I just drive over to Vegas like for a couple of days to get recovery in because they spoil us over there. So if I have a uh, you know three or four days or even three days or whatever, I'll just go over there get recovery in and then come right back to training. So um, it, it is chaotic. It's a little chaotic, but I've been doing it <clears throat> for the last four fights, and um, you know I'm on a four fight win streak. You know uh, two of the last three fights finishes. So you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Keep working. Yeah, it's hot way. So it's only what, like a, it's, it's only a five hour drive to get to Vegas. Four, four hour drive. Four hour drive. That's, yeah. that's not bad. That's not bad. At not all. bad. Yeah. yeah. To get to the PI, hell yeah, that's worth it. That shit's so nice. Mm-hmm. You know, I think we've talked about it before. Like, it's incredible how nice the thing is. Like, if you're not taking advantage of it as an like a UFC fighter. You're missing out on so much. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So much. definitely missing out. <laughs> And you only and you're not you, you still take advantage of it. So it is what it is. So all right, man. Yeah. Uh, I know you said you've got you like on our little our messages. You like to go into hiding around here, so I don't hold you on for too long. Uh, before oh, I let you go, ah oh, no. Before I let you go, this is the last thing. Obviously, you're not going to say you're going to win by. You're not going to lose. You're not going to say I'm going to win by decision. How are you going to be the first? How are you going to take Jack Shores <clears throat> zero uh, next week? Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I was going to, it was going to be like a very boring, like I was going to grind him against the cage. I wasn't really going to throw any punches or anything and just try <laughs> just to ride him it. out. Just yeah, like, uh, try to... <laughs> no, man. Uh, I think I'm the toughest test he's like, he's ever fought. Like he's definitely good 16 and 0, but when it comes down to it, everyone he's fought in the UFC has been cut. He's, he hasn't fought a guy with a winning record in the UFC. This would be my 10th UFC fight. One guy's been cut from the UFC that I fought. Everyone has winning records uh, in the UFC that I fought. So I'm his toughest test. He's not my toughest test. He might be 16 and 0, but that doesn't mean nothing to me. Um, so uh, I, th- I think uh, I'm going to be better everywhere. I'm going to dictate where the fight goes. Um, I can put him on his back when I want. I'm going to land some heavy elbows, and I- I- I'm feeling a knockout. I-, I feel really good off-, off that last fight. I've been landing really good. The setups have been great. Everything's coming together. Um, I'm strong as I've ever been. What else? Uh, <laughs> I just feel great, man. I'm ready to finish this kid. And I, I need a, I need a, dude. I need a, I need to make a fucking point and uh, and get the fight, a fight in the top ten. You know, I, I'm not a gatekeeper. I don't need to keep sitting back here and fighting these kids that don't deserve to be ranked. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. That's how I feel. I need to fuck this kid up, and uh, I need to fight someone for the top ten. 
Love to hear it. I mean, hey, I mean, like Sean O'Malley's pretty fresh. He finished Jack early. Hey, there's your call. I mean, you like get to be like, hey, man, I just beat this top prospect. I'll take another top prospect out and uh, yeah. take your uh, asterisk riddled zero that he keeps claiming. Which, by the way, bullshit. Like, Andre Munoz, obviously, Pedro Munoz is eye of a scratch. Like, he's not, like the one of the last guys I'd ever expect. Like, yeah, I want a way out of a fight. I'm assuming you feel the yeah. same way about that. Like, why would, why would any guy, most guys in the UFC would never, like, fight their way out of a fight? Especially, like, when he was up on the round. Like, why would he mm-hmm. fake an injury? Yeah, that, 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 that sucks to hear uh, people saying that. And it did, look, it did look weird, you know. But, I mean, who can judge an eye poke? I mean, who can, I've been poked in the eye so bad. I'm like, I don't know if I'm ever going to see again, like in sparring or something, you know. So, it's like the only person who's, like, just, you know, gets poked in the eye knows. And, obviously, he went to the hospital and there was some issues. So, I mean, do you expect him to fight after that, after, you know, he gets poked in the eye like that? So, there's a reason why we have to keep our hands closed. And, you know, shit happens and whatnot. But, I mean, you, I mean, you can't really blame him blame him for something like that you know it was was something out of his control for sure oh it's like that's what that's the crazy thing with like the eye pokes too is not just because it doesn't like go like you know into the socket you still have nails and you can still scratch that shit and that's kind of what happened yeah and you also Mm -hmm. do that's the other thing with eye pokes too is like even though if you get poked the vision might come back after a minute or so but there's other instances where you just completely fucked what was the worst eye poke you've ever had what was the worst eye poke going back in history where you're like oh i'm legit not gonna see ever again and then eventually Uh, yeah, it happened like in probably when I was an amateur sparring, like a guy totally like I felt like he was knuckle deep in my eye, bro. And I was like, and I and I like fell to the ground. I was like, I think I was probably like I probably screamed that bitch all the time. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? Is my eye still in the fucking you know? I had to like just hold my face. And it was probably like 10 or 15 minutes later, I was like, I could finally open my eye, you know, and I was scared. Like that's what one of like like people, yeah, you know, fighting is you know, uh it, it's a sport and I love it, but Dude, I, I'm scared to get my, my eye poked out of my face. That's the one injury that I'm, like, scared of. Like, Michael Bisbee not have an eye for, you know, oh for this. It, it, yeah. it, dude, it, we're out there risking it, risking our, our health out there. And that's something that's always been, like, my worst nightmare is get my eye kicked out of my face or something. Well, not kicked out of your face. Just have someone fucking just, like, go in there for a fucking Or like, that, yeah. yeah. For some reason, like I always think a kick. I always think of, like, a toenail or a toe fucking going oh. in my eye for some reason that's why i think because that's it's happened a couple times in sparring where someone throws a head kick and misses but their nail barely grazes the top or bottom and i get like a cut underneath Ooh, scares me never thought about the head kicks like, I, will we ever yeah. i don't think we've ever seen that like where a guy like toe pokes yeah yeah i don't think i don't know i don't think so or i don't want i don't want to see it i don't want to see it <laughs> i don't want to see it i'm just gonna assume yeah. it. and probably they just thought he got rocked and he was just covering up really he just got poked in the eye yeah, yeah. Because you don't really ever expect toe pokes. Is that is that is that mm-hmm. actually like your most like uh, speaking of that? What is that your most irrational fear when you go into the cage? Is that you're gonna get your eye poked out? When I go into the fight, never I never even think about it, you know. But like you know, in practice or um, just random, if I'm thinking about it, people ask me like, are you are you scared to like get hurt or anything? And I'm like, oh, if there's anything I'm scared of, it'd be like you know, like get my eye kicked out of my face or poked out of my face or something, you know. <laughs> it's, 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 it's like it's crazy to think about but yeah. it's actually true it's yeah. like that the long-term health effects of that yeah. dude i want to be able to see the rest of my life like that's so, yeah. so valuable yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that's scary bro most people don't have to go to work and have to worry about getting their their eyes poked out <laughs> no, you don't you don't all i think i have to worry about yeah. is like staring into these lights too much and having like a black dot that's nothing compared to you yeah. guys going in there and getting a fucking eye jet fucking yeah. fucked in the eyes there's nothing you can do. <laughs> easy with those bro <laughs> <laughs> i didn't consent i didn't up. consent no, put them up put them up <laughs> all right man so i already got that if there's anyone to give a quick shout out to uh go ahead and give your shout outs and then harrison's gonna have a finishing question for you oh nice yeah um la- uh, uh since last good. time like um follow me at ricky simone ufc on my socials and uh uh, I have all my sponsors linked up in the bio, so appreciate you guys. All right, Harrison, let's give let's give a final question. I know you had a little couple of them ready to go. Yeah, no, I had a, I had a few ready pick, to go. Pick your so favorite one. Let's, let's, just... let's just pick your favorite one yeah. and let him get him on his way because it's also you know it's thirty hour time. <laughs> yeah. So oh, shoot, <laughs> I uh, so I'm dedicated. God damn debates. it, <laughs> I'm a man of my word. Yeah. <laughs> I was having a few debates at the bar I work at earlier today about this question. Uh, so here we go. In a race between Usain Bolt and Joey Chestnut, in which they both have to f- completely eat a hot dog and then run 100 meters, who's winning? Who the hell is Joey Chestnut? 
He's the uh, the hot dog eating guy. On, the greatest uh, athlete of, of all time, yeah. Joey Chestnut. <laughs> he uh, he put down sixty eight hot dogs today in ten minutes. It was he was he not Fair. only not only was he sick. He also had a torn Achilles. Broke up on stage. Oh yeah, destroys sixty eight glizzies like it was nothing. And also he took out a protester. Yeah. Wow. All right. This guy's legit. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So just one hot dog. One hot dog. Yeah. So like the question okay. is, would you say be able to eat that hot dog fast enough to catch up to Joey in the race? Because obviously Joey's gulping. Uh, it would yeah. take Joey three seconds yeah. max. Yeah, I think yeah. he's saying down that dog. I think he can down the dog and catch up. Especially if that yeah. dude has a tore Achilles, he ain't moving that fast, honestly. <laughs> Catch him just limping his way to the finish yeah, line. Come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> dude, was it about the pass last time we your questions? I would definitely would have passed on that question. <laughs> No, that would have no, been. That would have been a no. Yeah, that would have been a no. I'm surprised you don't know. I don't. How do you not know Joey Chestnut? I'm like shocked. That's what I'm shocked about. Yeah. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go binge watch him. I don't know. I feel weird about watching another man down sixty plus oh, hot dogs. It's, <laughs> it's it's like the cra- the crazy thing about the like hot dog eating contest is like the before how serious they are. The statistics they put up there. Like at one point, for one of the guys it was like, this man ate twenty eight pounds of poutine in like ten minutes. I was like, what the fuck? Damn. Dude. That's so much food. Dude, I mean, like a rabbit right like... now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I can't even, I can't even, like, eat that much without getting full. I can't even imagine eating that much. Like, how do they, they, they go throw all that up after, huh? They have to. They don't, do they go, when they eat, I don't know about that. They hold you think they, they just have, keep it down? They have terrible shits. All right, Joey Chess, I'm talking oh, about it. Oh, the worst. Oh, my God. His dumps oh, are disgusting. Oh, my God. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're gross. They're super disgusting. At least five pounds per dump. Yeah, that's what I'm guessing. Dude, imagine like you know, like you guys, you'll wake up fight, you'll wake up on next Friday, you'll be you'll be at that one thirty five, one thirty six. I'm assuming. Do you is there even a point of even cutting that extra pound unless other than trying Hell to prove no. your championship weight? Yeah, like why why the Hell fuck? Would no, you? no. The only time it, it, like um like it like uh I'll always be like right on, and then um sometimes it always seems like the scales might be like half a pound light or compared to the my scale or something. So I might be like 135.5 or 135 flat on their scale, but I, I cut until 136, honestly. <laughs> I've always wondered why, like, obviously, you know, you improve championship weight, but like, why would you even want to risk that extra pound? Just stay as fueled, mm-hmm. even though it's like that one pound, like that's still, that's a lot to, that's a lot to lose over the course of a couple. That's pounds. the hardest. That's the hardest pound too. the, yeah. the end, the last few pounds are the, the they come off the slowest. So yeah, yeah. Take the hardest. You're not, no one's, no one's willingly cutting an extra pound. <laughs> No, no, no one wants to do that shit. So like when you so like imagine like you wake up that morning at one thirty six, you eat twenty eight pounds of poutine, you're up to like one fifty, one sixty pounds of just poutine and potty. <laughs> that's kind of like the, like I don't I don't these guys don't cut weight or anything. But like that's kind of the way they think about it. like they just they wake up like at one hundred thirty five pounds and then the night, literally like six hours later they're one hundred sixty yeah. pounds. Yeah, but they probably have to get their stomachs ready for that, right? They probably do something yeah, like make they, sure they their do stomachs stuff like all enlarge it and stuff. Yeah, they have to. They, they gotta like practice by putting down glizzy after glizzy after glizzy. They also, I, like, I'm dead ass. There's like exercises and stretches they do to like, like, make their stomach like wider and be able to just like hold more food. Bro, the first time I ever cut to 135, it was uh, it was my last amateur fight, and. uh Oh, it was so rough. I was eating like, I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't have like the UFC and the PI and all that. You know, I was a poor amateur fighter. I had, I was living off tilapia and Brussels sprouts, basically. <laughs> it's the worst, bro. <laughs> and after the fight, I bit, I binge eat, ate so much food. I was 175, like within four days. I gained 40 pounds, whatever. And <gasps> dude, I was, I couldn't breathe. I was like, the other guys, I'd better chill. <laughs> yeah, dude, nonstop. So, yeah, I wonder. I bet you that's like close to how they feel, or they probably even feel worse. But I, yeah, yeah <laughs> I yeah, imagine that's, that's, that's the level to be insane. Yeah, it's got it's got to be somewhat close to that. How much? So like, I know it's probably changed the past couple of fights with the cuts and all that. What what what's your usual fight weight? Like one fifty five, one sixty. Yeah, usually usually I walk in the cage between. I, I feel like the best between like fifty four and fifty six. 54, 56. So just yeah, okay, I, that makes sense. I've got to play like one sixty one time, and I was like, I feel like I I overdid it. <laughs> I overdid it. I, yeah, but, I think there's like a like there's like yeah. a like a nice little medium to that. Like you can't overfuel. You can't like fuel too little. Nice little mm. happy spot. 
Yeah. Some guys have trouble putting weight back on after the weight cut. I've never had trouble putting weight on. I, I grew up a fat kid, so it's easy for me to. My body like wants. It's like natural. It's like it wants me to go back to being a fat boy. <laughs> it wants. It wants to put the fat back on. <laughs> can't really. Yeah. Can't really. I had a deep dish pizza. I was in Chicago last night. I had deep dish pizza. Oh. I woke up this morning and I was just. I was way too like Oof. bloated. Oof. Ooh. My stomach started rumbling when you said deep dish pizza, bro. Ooh, That's my stuff. I'm sorry. I know I keep, <laughs> we've talked about hot dogs. We've talked yeah. about just pizza, poutine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's let's on send you off then before we get you too hungry and fuck up the cut. So as we, as we said, good luck next weekend, man. Uh, we will be cheering for you. Uh, don't tell Jack I said that, but we're cheering for you. Uh, I'm not going to tell, tell Jack him. I said that. But <laughs> I I'm going to tell him. him. When I see him, I'm going <laughs> All right, man, I'll talk to I'll talk to you later, man. Good luck next weekend. We'll be cheering for you, man. All right, awesome talking to our man Ricky. Uh, gonna low key kind of cheering from this weekend against Jack, but I did some research. Jack isn't actually betraying us. Looks like he did zero interviews except for James Lynch. So mm-hmm. hey, maybe off my shit list, maybe whatever, whatever. Let's get into our winners and losers. Um, let's just go on to my first winner. Uh, my winner is Moms in Utah. Uh, if you haven't been on Twitter, you haven't been on social media, you wouldn't hear that Zach Wilson did not just cheat on his girlfriend and then his other girlfriend. I don't know, you Mormon dude. Uh, he he hooked up with his mom's best friend, and that's the reason why his girlfriend was so pissed at him. Uh, on my books, uh, that makes him a franchise quarterback. The Jets are gonna yes. they're gonna win the Super Bowl. I saw maybe the funniest comment: the, the Jets uh, scored over forty for the first time since 2018. So congratulations, Jets. You got your franchise Great quarterback. Uh, congratulations to Mormonism being popularized uh, in uh, 2022. All right, Harrison, you're first. He's one. got that dog in him. He's yeah, like, got that dog on him. Uh, yeah, my uh, my first winner goes to Ball Sack Sports. Uh, I mean, did it again. See, they got they did it again. They did it really did it again. They got ESPN to run a whole segment on a fake John Morant quote about how he could beat the crap out of MJ in a one v one. So. When are people going to stop buying this? It's so funny. I mean, lo- love to see it every time it happens, but just stop falling for it at this point. It's really it's Barry McCockner, but on steroids. It's worse than Barry exactly. McCockner. It's getting, it's getting, it's wild. They're wilding out here. Let's get canceled, Harrison. I'm going to go into my first loser. My first loser is the WNBA. Um, so if you, on, on the internet, I don't know if you look this up, the WNBA All-Star Game Trophy uh, cost 20 bucks. That, that was insane. That I, was like, I, I hope that's not on. true. I hope that's not true. I, I hope, hope it's not just from Target. Uh, not only that, the game itself was demoted off of ESPN uh, to ESPN News. I'm sorry, ESPN U. Oh. Not even ESPN News. ESPN U oh. uh, for the Wimbledon. Uh, so for the 50 WNBA fans out there, I have something worse I'm going to say later. But uh, for now, uh, whew, that's a tough blow. That's a tough blow. Here that, here. That's objectively just a loss in, in total. Like, come on. That's a tough scene. That's a tough scene. Har- tough. Harrison, you're uh, your uh, first loser. My first loser is the Philadelphia Flyers because they went out and did the one thing that alienated most of the fan base. They signed a player that basically all of us hate. So, great job, guys. You went out inside <laughs> one of the most well-known douchebags in the N- NHL who has been basically kicked out of multiple teams for racist behavior. So. Just a fantastic job by the team to really understand what, to, what these fans want and try to do the best thing they can to win. So I give you guys, I give you guys five months to start love the dude. Um, he's gonna play with play grit so. and intensity. Um, moving on to my <laughs> winner, uh, LeBron James. LeBron, everyday LeBron. Uh, in summer league bubble, they're all there watching their little younglings play in the summer league. No big deal, but uh, the one of one, the him of him, Spenrick Mathern looking great. But anyway, LeBron James, uh, he he just like the everyday man, he also brings a uh, little Ziploc bags of his own snacks. So he doesn't have to oh, pay yeah. uh, 20 bucks for a glizzy and 20 bucks for a beer. So shout out LeBron for being an everyday man like every one of us. And even though he's making, he's like the first billion dollar basketball player, uh, he is still living like an everyday man. So shout out LeBron, winner. There you hey, go. There's your who, ring. Who LeBron. hasn't tried to sneak a snack into uh, a sports game? So much. I remember I used to say I was diabetic but, uh, in high school, so I could sneak in a whole bag of treats. It's a and smart they couldn't check my bag, but like it's just needles, so I can like stand myself. <laughs> and they never be, they never bat an eye, and so I'd always bring in whatever I wanted. It was great. It was great. Uh, great Harrison, your last winner. My last winner goes to FIFA 17, because 
if you have uh, no, the transfer window just opened up for European soccer, and all the moves that have been happening, like feel like moves that would have happened from like FIFA 17. You've got Paul Pogba going back to Juventus, Raheem Sterling at the forefront of the transfer uh, ground. And we've also got looking like Ronaldo is going to move away from Manchester United to Chelsea. So it's just been batshit insane. Not to mention a whole ridiculous saga over Rafinha, who shouldn't have the, that kind of saga. He's not that good of a player. But it's just been really peak soccer. And it's been fun to watch. And it just felt like it feels like a transfer into that would have made sense when uh, FIFA 17 was out. Was out so, yeah. Well, let's talk of soccer. Uh, well, let's, let's, give w- soccer. let's give the WA the, the second most amount of coverage they've ever had. Uh, my next loser is Brittany Griner. So I want to come out oh. front and say, I want to come out and say, do I think she should be back in the States? Yes. Yes, yes, yes she should be back in mm-hmm. the States. What she did was stupid as shit. And she should have known taking fucking whatever, whatever substance, whatever weed substance. I don't, I forget. It was, I haven't seen it was it just was, THC. Was it oil or was it like, it was like for it was a like- vape? Oil, yeah. Oil, whatever. Regardless, if you're taking that shit into Russia as a black woman, that's stupid as fuck. Anyway, that is not why she's my loser. Um, She's my, well, sort of is. The main reason she's my loser is I've been trying to figure out the real reason, though. Like, yeah, having the oil, not a really good look in Russia. But the real reason, I think this is a a deal between America and Russia uh, for punishing Brittany Griner for real, for saying that she could beat Boogie one-on-one back in, like, 2016. (laughs) Uh, I, I, I don't know what else to explain it. I think that's why America is like, eh, we'll leave her there. I, I, think, I think it's fully uncovered at this point. You can get prime, Bur- you can you can get me boogie in ten years when his like he literally's in a wheelchair going against Brittany Griner, like turn her prime. I still think boogie would fucking destroy her. Boogie is just, he's got the height and he's got the physicality. He's just like. I don't. I don't see Griner stopping him at all. That's the thing. That's, that was. That's still one of the most. There's a lot of ridiculous statements out there in the sports world. Oh, I'm frozen. Oh no, there we go. Oh no, frozen again. Am I still frozen? Oh, we're back. Fuck my equipment. Anyway, yeah, yeah. She's not gonna be. That's one of the stupidest statements I've ever heard in sports history. Um. All right, Harrison, you're uh, your last loser. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it real lighthearted and simple. Uh, any fast food place in Bloomington right now has to be like quaking in their boots. Because Raising Cane's is getting their signs up, and once that's open, it's over for uh, everyone else in town. Like, I can tell you, all the drunk college students that are going to be coming out of the bars are going to see that Raising Cane sign down Kirkwood at like 1 a.m. and be like, that's where we're going. Fuck ZNC, fuck McDonald's, fuck Taco Bell, Raising Cane's. So, just out of pure excitement, my last loser is every single other fast food place in Bloomington. Shout out to like the three people who actually knew he's talking about. So let's move yes, on to sir. that's that's what we got for the show. That's what we got. Uh, obviously, Ricky Simone, uh, shoot us some questions. We're gonna do our first ever fans questions. Uh, we're doing Bruce Buffer on uh, Wednesday, uh, so we'll be asking for y'all to send some questions. We'll have some fun with that. Uh, worst case scenario, I'll make some up with all your suck. So uh, without further ado, that's the show. We see you guys on Friday. Hopefully, uh, Bruce Buffer. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around with me all the way to the end. Uh, I just want to once again thank the sponsor of the show, Living.Fit. If you're looking to better yourself, make sure you go to download the app or visit the website, Living.Fit today.